Hey guys, Ellie here. Today, I got this here 16 foot gate. This thing's pretty long. I ordered a 16 foot and a 10 foot gate from Tractor Supply. They delivered it yesterday. They delivered it to Pop Boss House for some reason instead of ours, but we brought it over here no problem. So today we're gonna go ahead and get it set up. I'm gonna take it to the necessary spot and I'm gonna show you guys why I feel like this gate could actually help out with a little problem that we're having right now. The point is, why do we need this gate? Uh, this is one of those things where like, let me show you around. I want you to look right here at the grass. I want you to see how high it's getting. And uh, this is good. This is a great blessing. Don't get me wrong. We prayed and we uh, did everything we could to get grass to grow for months. Last time we had a drought. It gets really hot during the summertime in Texas. And so during the summers, we have really, really low levels of grass. Sometimes it's basically completely barren, our pastures. I know my dad over at his property not far from here has the same problem. And so we're grateful for every blade of grass that we can get. And so I never thought we'd actually be having the opposite problem here. Guys, look how high the grass is. Gus is sitting there like digging his face into a jungle, it looks like. Oh, hero, the grass goes up to dang near his torso, his tummy. Um, Ziggy can't even see his feet. Those guineas are sitting there walking through the jungle as well. So to be honest, I'm probably gonna have to trim this grass just a little bit anyways with the tractor attachment or maybe a lawnmower, something like that. But let me at least explain the reason why I'm kind of hesitant to do that. The reason why I wanted to try a different way first. Y'all recall, you know, last summer, me and Meg's first summer being the caretakers here, or any previous summer that my dad and Jamie lived here, all the, all the way back to 2018, 2019, those early days. Every summer in Texas where we live, y'all know it gets extremely hot. It's not rocket science. We live close to the equator. It just gets really, really hot over here. And when it does, we don't have rain for several months and the grass dies. The grass dies to the point where it looks, like look over there and you see how it's like brown. You see the sand, you can see literally the, the earth's core it looks like just the bare bottom without any grass that's what it looks like all throughout here kind of like uh, over there those sandy areas the whole thing looks kind of like that whenever it gets really hot it does that most years and so it stands the reason that if we don't do anything that'll probably happen again this year and so I sit there and think that yeah like our grass it's very plentiful right now as you can see the goats are eating it they're happy if anything, it might be too plentiful. That's a, a quote, unquote, I don't want to call it a problem, but that's a circumstance that we never thought we'd have where the grass is too plentiful. But, um, you know, if that's the case right now, how much of a shame would it be for me to cut a bunch of good grass that the goats are eating, that the goats are getting nourished off of, when I know in a few months, they'll be starving and begging for grass, just like most years. And so that's the reason that I kind of have a little bit of reluctance to just go and trim the whole thing. Now I could do a very light trim, maybe just to get it a little bit lower so that it isn't like snake height or the height that invites snakes, but it's a height to where they can still eat plenty. That may be what we have to do anyways, but just in general, in a perfect world, in an ideal scenario, what I would love best, and what I'm sure anybody would love best for their babies, is to be able to have full year-round healthy levels of grass that can sustain and nourish the babies, that's not too high, inviting snakes and other critters we don't want, and not too low to where they're having to eat near the ground where coccidia and other parasites live. A perfect, healthy, medium or not too low also to where they're not getting enough nourishment a perfect medium level and so i'm sitting here and i've been brainstorming the past few days trying to think of a way is there any chance that that's possible is there any way we can at least get kind of close to making it that way where we can have it at a medium healthy level maybe almost year round and at first glance, you might think no, because you can't control how hot it gets in Texas during the summers. And, you know, you can't control the weather. So I, I, I get that. But I have an idea of something that might could help. Hear me out. So I've noticed that a lot of the, the goats and stuff like that, of course, now that I'm right here, 
Angel, or I mean, sorry, Hero, Ziggy, and Gus just reading in this area right here. But on a normal day, when I'm, well, that doesn't come out right. You know what I mean? On a normal day, if nobody's out here, they're only gonna eat in this main area right here. And so as you can see, they've gotten the grass over there really, really low, maybe even a little bit lower than that healthy medium I was talking about. But they've been kind of neglecting these high areas right here. And I don't know why, because it's really good, healthy grass. And when I walk over here, or when Meg walks over here, they follow us and they love eating it. So it's healthy and it's tasty, as you can tell. But um, like over here, you can see they've been neglecting a good amount of the grass. And I don't know why. I think maybe they're just lazy and they don't want to walk all this way over here. Or maybe because it's been hot the past few days and they haven't had a whole lot of energy too. And so I understand that. I get it. But I want them to try to eat more of the grass over here. I want them to kind of be able to eat this down naturally, gradually, day by day, week by week, month by month, so that we're not just all cutting it and letting it go to waste, if you will, so that it's nourishing their bellies, but at the same time, they're actually maintaining the grass so that we're not inviting critters or anything unhealthy. And with hope, my hope is that if they can gradually eat this grass down to get it to a healthy medium level, and on top of that, come June, July, August, the really hot summer months, I can get myself, you know, a water hose or get myself some sort of apparatus to try to hydrate the grass manually when it's not raining. Maybe if we do those two things, we can keep this grass healthy all year round. Or at the very least, we can help the grass stay alive a lot longer. So maybe they only have a few weeks or one month without any grass as opposed to a full three or four month blazing hot summer you know what i mean so that's kind of my idea i'm not 100 percent if it'll work or not but i sit there and think that it stands a good chance i don't see any reason why it couldn't work or why i couldn't at least make things better so that's why we're going to set the gate up right here in the 16 foot uh section that i was talking about and during the day i'm going to have i'm going to close it so the goats and the donkeys and the alpacas are all restricted to this pasture so they have no choice but to eat the grass over here and get it down a little bit. They have a pond to stay hydrated in, not, not for water, but just to cool off, that's what I meant. I'm gonna add some water sources. I'm gonna hang them along the fence, I think, and um, to give them plenty of water sources to stay hydrated, that'll be their drinking water. Hopefully not the pond water. <laughs> but um, yeah, guys, I, I, uh, I have high hopes for this and I think it'll work. So, you know, without further ado, let's get this, uh, let's get this gate project going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's completed. I'm really proud of myself, I'm not gonna lie. This is a 16 foot gate. And as I mentioned earlier, it is not the lightest thing in the world. That's strong metal and it um, probably weighs a good, I don't know, I'm not, maybe 40, 50, 60 pounds of carrying it around, doing it by myself. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I'm proud of myself. And not to mention, I probably did that in, I would say it probably took me about 45 minutes in totality from the start of the job to finish. In 45 minutes, I put up a 16 foot gate, got it latched, got it swinging perfectly. Let me just show you guys. I got it all done by myself in under an hour. And considering where I began last year, how new and inexperienced and probably how comically bad I was at farm jobs, at being a farmer and stuff, I'm proud of myself for improving. Yeah, the gate swings just fine as you can see. It's hard to do it with one hand because even, even like this, it's heavy, I'm telling you. It's not light. I did it a little bit lower to the ground so that nobody crawls under, no predators under or none of our babies under when they don't need to be. But uh, yeah, the gate swings, it's fully functional. I got it uh, all hinged into place right there. And uh, yeah, I, I'm a little bit tired, but I'm proud of myself. I feel like I've improved a lot from where I was before. I, don't, I think a year ago, if someone had told me that one year later you could put together a 16 foot gate get it hinged in under an hour by yourself i don't know if i would have believed it 
enough about uh, enough about myself though that's not what the whole point of this video is supposed to be about uh ziggy's already over there so, yeah you, you can just see from right here guys to further illustrate the point i was trying to make earlier you just see like how high the grass is and so i might need to do a slight trim anyways even despite this but i hope y'all can get where i'm coming from with that if there's so much grass if everything's so plentiful right now and i know in a few months there's a good chance it'll be barren and we'll be, we'll be begging for grass it just doesn't make sense and i just don't feel completely right cutting a bunch of grass right now even though it needs it i'd rather find another way to just have the goats and the alpacas ziggy angel just have everyone kind of gradually eat the grass down so that they're getting nutrition in their bellies and i also have some plans for how maybe we can try to water the grass over here before it gets super hot in the summer so that hopefully it doesn't die at all hopefully it's, we can keep it hydrated even during the hot summer months or at the very least we can make it stay alive a little bit longer so that the goats and the other animals won't have as long of a period of time without grass it's a challenge here in texas sometimes i think it makes sense what i was saying though but um that's uh, that's my plan to try to gradually wean it down or gradually cut it down with the goat's mouths instead of you know just trimming it all at once with a machine but uh yeah guys that's about it with all that said i hope y'all enjoyed this video y'all be sure oh yeah there's your yellow over there i had him do a gate over there as well a 10 foot gate so that i can drive through with the argo or with the side by side or whatever i can cut down some leaves from the back and i can just deliver it to him through that gate I figured it'd be a lot more convenient than, you know, opening a ton of gates going all the way around and stuff like that. It's just a whole inconvenience before, but I think that'll make it a lot easier for me to bring them stuff. A lot easier to have access to the back and whatnot. He's a good guy. Dario, he's a great worker. A great friend, too, on a personal level. But yeah, those are the newest things going on over here at the sanctuary. Y'all be sure to let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you guys want to see. I hope you all have an incredibly blessed day. And as I always say... Your boy, Ali out.